call to order the regular meeting of the Arbus School Board at 7 o'clock. And if you'll stand, Jennifer's a great place to start us off for the pledge. Fight both directions. <laughs> yeah. I pledge allegiance to, to the flag of the United, United States, States of America, America and to the republic, republic for which it stands, one nation, nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We'll follow with a moment of silence. from patrons. Anyone who'd like to address the board? Okay. Moving on to item number four, recognition. And I think I'll let Mr. Spiker lead on this. Some happy news. Yes, some very good news. <laughs> uh, board, um, we have Mr. Medich and Mr. Arndt with us, and we'd like to recognize Mr. Arndt. We have some other things planned for the future, but for now, I'll just say, Mr. Arndt, congratulations. Outstanding job to you and your students. The Midwest College Board, which represents three, 13 states, recently honored uh, Mr. Arndt. I think it was Cleveland, wasn't it? Yeah. Where you were at, you and Mr. Medich, as Teacher of the Year for 13 states for AP, and they were just sort of blown away about how this small school district can do everything that it's doing. And that's a tremendous uh, honor for Mr. Arndt, for Mr. Medich, but for our students, for Argus schools and the Argus community. You think about 13 states and here's Argus doing the job. And so I just want to say thank you to all of you. And Mr. Arndt, I just am amazed by your God-given abilities to teach students. And we do appreciate it. Thank, thank you. you. Appreciate yeah. it. Yes. Do you, one of you want to explain a little bit? I think Mr. Arndt had to give a speech. And yeah. <laughs> I know you were excited about that. <laughs> it was not recorded, thank you. Well, you don't have to give the speech, but you want to sort of tell us what the experience was like a little bit? And share uh, a bit? Sure. Um, being involved with the Notre Dame AP Tippin program, um, uh, I believe they nominated me, correct? Um, and then the uh, experience was wonderful. Uh, we went down there. Um, it was the college board, their Midwest Regional Forum. So they had a keynote speaker, the vice president of the college board, so we got to learn more information about our AP program. Um, I just want to thank Mr. Medich and everybody involved that got us involved with that Notre Dame AP tipping program. So that's where uh, all of us AP teachers here at Argus, we got all of our resources and instructional strategies. And of course, none of this would be possible without the hard work of our, of our students, you know. Uh, just keep thinking to myself, and I remind even my students, you know, currently that Past achievement does not guarantee future <laughs> success. So I still got 15 kids in the classroom that I'm hoping to do well on this year's exam. So and a few months to keep working. Yep. <laughs> to accomplish it, Mr. Bennett, the two of you took the trip to Cleveland and came back the same the same day as you got there. Lord, thing you'd want to share? Uh, no, I mean, it, yes, there's a, a, there's plenty of tools that we put in place you know, with the AP Tip program, but it takes dedicated professionals to actually translate that to success for students. Uh, Mr. Arn is very dedicated to students and to the school, um, and uh, he's a model teacher. Um, I wish we'd be cloned. So do I. <laughs> and we would if we could. <laughs> I haven't figured that one out yet. But, uh, no, it's just outstanding. And the questions I get from other superintendents and all over, I'm sure you guys get too. Well, how does a little school district like Argus accomplish these things. And I said, it's great people working hard, but it's students, it's staff, it's community, it's support, it's a lot of people. But Mr. Arndt, you're the leader, and we sure appreciate that and your accomplishments. It's well deserved. Thanks. Thanks again. And thanks for coming to board meetings so we can talk about you. I know that feels so comfortable. Yeah. <laughs> it's a very humbling experience. I understand. <laughs> Just keep up the good work. Yeah. Okay. 
thank you again. Uh, item five, we have some minutes to approve, uh, both from the regular uh, meeting on February 11th, followed by the executive session February 11th. I remember right, during an ice storm. I will remember <laughs> that part of the minutes. <laughs> so do I have a motion to approve those minutes? Thank you. The motion, do we have a second? Okay, it's moved and seconded to approve those two sets of minutes. Any discussion or questions? <coughs> okay, all in favor signify with an aye. 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 Opposed? I vote. Okay, <coughs> item six, we have personnel uh, changes. Heidi, do you have a copy of those personnel? Sorry. She's taking, catching up with our minutes here. We'll get them up here, and then we can consider them board. But while you're doing that, I'd like to introduce somebody to you yeah. coming up. So, um, uh, board, we're recommending to you a new junior, senior high school counselor. She's been here for several months working on, on a Kayla's maternity leave, but uh, we're recommending for our full-time guidance personnel. But Beth Schmelz, Beth, is here. Uh, she comes to us from John Glenn, was a counselor there, what, 24 years? Did I get that right? Language arts teacher, also by profession, but Beth has done a wonderful job during maternity leave, and we're excited to recommend her as our permanent, regular, junior, senior high school counselor. And in fact, I was just meeting with them after school today. We got lots of ideas for the future. Beth, welcome. Anything you'd like to say to the board? Or I'm I'm uh, very happy for the opportunity, and um, I I know I've told Mr. Medich, and I've mentioned it to teachers as well. I'm amazed at the things that happen here at Argus. I went to the musical yesterday, outstanding performance by those kids and all the adults that um, were part of that. Um, I've just been very, very impressed with what, what I've seen so far and I'm very happy to be a part of it now. I appreciate it. Great. Well, we're glad to have you here. So, board, I would certainly recommend um, Beth's employment as our <laughs> junior senior high school guidance counselor. Welcome, Beth. Thank you. Okay, we have um, two employments, one, two resignations, and some volunteer positions on the screen. I think that's it, isn't it? Uh, I think so. Yeah, okay. Um, so we can do this all at once if anybody would like to make a motion to that effect. I move uh, personnel changes A through C be approved as presented. Thank you. Do we have a second? Thank you. Okay, do we have any uh, further discussion or questions concerning the personnel changes? Okay, all in favor with an aye? Aye. aye. Opposed? Okay, motion carries. Those personnel changes have been approved. Uh, item seven, uh, Argus Summer Kickoff Festival uh, is asking for approval to uh, use the parking areas. Yeah, that's June 21 and 22 board, and it's a uh, yearly thing. They use our parking lots for the festival and just keep all the insurance uh, issues in order. Um, we really need the board's approval to do it, as we've done in the past. So we'd recommend approval for June 21 and 22 for the summer kickoff festival parking. A motion? I'll move to okay. the center. Thank you. Angie, do we have a second? I'll second. <coughs> Thank you. And um, any questions or discussion? I'm uh, assuming we're still going to let the high school groups collect parking yeah. and share their fees. Yes. Do they? Yeah. Same as traditional. Mm -hmm. Yes. Good question. Okay. Anything further? Okay, we'll call for a vote. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Okay, good. Uh, item eight, the Argus Summer Academy. More this is something we started a year ago where it's really staff development for our teachers during the summer. And uh, we're proposing the schedule for July 22nd, 23rd, and 25th, uh, July 29th, 30th, and August 1st. So there'll be six days, six sessions, six full days or 12 half days. 
and for teachers that volunteer to attend, uh, fifty day fifty dollars for a half day session, hundred dollars for a full day session. Teachers can earn up to three hundred dollars doing this, but it is staff development during the summer, which is so much more efficient than doing it during the school year, where we have to hire subs and then it's not as good <coughs> education for our kids. And we had over ninety percent of our teachers attend this year ago. It was very cost effective and very productive. So. We would recommend these dates for the Argus Summer Teacher Academy for summer of 19. And uh, topics will be detailed later. We're still developing topics as we work with the teachers. But the thing I'd sent out in your packet has some suggested topics on it. It'll be things like classroom management, differentiation, uh, reading, using technology to enhance instruction, using Apple TV, teaching Indiana State standards, using student data to drive instruction, uh, meeting the needs of de depressed or students where always an issue trying to deal with kids that are really struggling in that and trying to give our teachers some more tools to deal with our students. So we'd recommend approval of this for this summer. Okay, do we have a motion to that effect? I have a motion. Thank you. How about, how about a second? Second. Thank you. Okay, any uh, further discussion on the motion? You already asked, answered the one question I had about what, what kind of a rate we had last year, how many attended. You already said about, yep. nine, about 90%. It's great. I was pleasantly pleased. They had a great turnout. And these count towards their professional yes. credits? Yes, and they can count towards their professional credits to get their license renewed, and we certify them for that. And it, uh, It's just very cost-effective doing that way because we're actually paying our teachers to do this instead of paying for subs right. and put some ex gives teachers out to it doesn't cost us any more money but it's better education because our teachers are in the classroom and our teachers are <coughs> trained for the school year starts so it's a win-win mm -hmm. yeah good point i just want to point out i like the mental health uh course that's probably not something they get all the time we're all focused on instruction 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 and i think that you know, a guidance counselor can't address all the mental health needs. The teachers in the classroom see it too. Um, so I think that would be a our really good choice. Teachers realize this is a huge topic, and our kids do too. And uh, we just need to be aware when kids are struggling, and so we tune in and can hopefully provide some resources for them. Because mm -hmm. any given day, we have kids that are struggling. There's no doubt about it. Okay. If there's no further discussion, we'll call for a vote on the. Summer Teacher Academy. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you. Number nine, approval of summer hours. Board, we started this a year ago, too, looking at a four-day work week during the summer. Main reason for this to converge, conserve uh, energy costs. Basically, we're going to uh, work from Monday through Thursday. Our employees will work the same number of hours. We're going to work four tens instead of five eights. But we're going to turn the electricity, uh, not the electricity, but turn the air conditioning off for Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Saves us a lot of money. And I had a few questions last year about it. Well, I'm planning to come in Friday. Can you turn on the air conditioning in my room or my office? I said, well, it doesn't really work that way. Um, you're welcome to come in, but it might be open the windows, and you're welcome to be here. But the whole idea is to save those energy costs. And it did make a major difference. And I surveyed the staff, the uh, non-certified staff, what they thought about it, and they were overwhelming and thought it was a good idea, and they appreciated it. So we'd approve doing it and run from June 7th for, to July 19th. And we want to stop that schedule the last week of July and getting into August as we're gearing up for the new school year. But it'd be for uh, seven Fridays. Recommend approval of that for another year. Okay, is there a motion to approve the summer hours? I'll move to approve the summer hours. Thank you, Chris. And is, do we have a um, second? I'll second. Thank you. Okay, <coughs> moved and second. Any further discussion? Okay, all in favor of the motion? Aye. 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 Any opposed? <laughs> <laughs> okay, it passes 5 0. Okay, item number 10. Um, Megan Hughes has a, a, would like to do a survey of an interest level for a, a spring break trip in 2021. Right? 
Yes, she has talked to Mr. Medich and I about uh, proposing a trip to Belize during spring break of 2021. Well, it's hard to say 2021. But yeah. Not that far away, though. Um, this would be the same organization that we're planning the spring break trip through this uh, spring break. But, um, Board, what we're just asking that you would give permission for a survey. It would not be approval for the trip. But could see if there's an interest or not. Um, she put some of the things that they want to do, the educational cultural experiences, uh, visit a chocolate farm, sustainable farming practices, banana plantation, um, looking at the ancient civilization, man ruins, and all activities that fit into our school curriculum and see if there's an interest for students to travel to Belize during spring break. And, I think these types of opportunities for our kids are important. If they're interested in doing it, great. If they're not, that's fine too, but I would recommend just conducting the survey and then if there's an interest, we'll come back to you to ask for permission to proceed. If there's not an interest, we'll stop there, but I hate to put it out there without you approving that, yes, they can survey it. So try to answer any questions or Mr. Medich can answer any questions, but we both map well. <coughs> We think it'd be appropriate for to survey the students. Are we still thinking in every other year type of opportunity? Yeah. So, yeah, I think it, with the volume of kids we have every year is a, right. a lot. How many are going to Europe? Do we? Do you know how many, Mr. Medich? I know you're planning to go. I thought twelve. <coughs> we were around fifty, but that's some fifteen, fifty. Fifty by zero. Right. I think that's not just students. That's that's adult Look, students. Right. right. I that's think still. that's around the total. Group. But that's a big group. Mm -hmm. So there certainly was interest in doing it this time. We'll, we'll see just where the community's at and students are at. Because one of the things that they decide they want to do it, it takes a while to fundraise. Mm -hmm. And we don't want to wait till 2021 before we start considering it. So kids can plan ahead, and parents a couple of years. And that's sort of the focus of their kid in high school to do something like this. Okay, do we have a motion to approve the uh, interest survey? A motion. Thank you. And do we have a second? Second. <laughs> okay. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Uh, any further discussion or questions? Mr. Medich is out there, so any, any questions? Has Mrs. Highs been to Belize? Or does she just have an in? I don't believe so, no. Okay. She's <coughs> talked to several schools that have done this through this tour company and the tour company's met, so we know people have had positive mm -hmm. experiences. And <clears throat> this tour company comes highly rated to do it. Does a lot of local high schools in that. So, and we'll certainly know more after our spring break trip coming up very shortly. <laughs> Mr. Medich will be ready to report to us along with others. <laughs> Your bag's back, Mr. Medich. Oh yeah, for a week now. <laughs> <laughs> what, what company is that? Is it EF? EF. EF. EF Tours. Yeah. Years and years ago, yeah. took a student group with EF. Yeah. yeah, he's definitely taken student groups over the years. Okay, any further discussion? Okay, we need a vote on the to approve the interest survey. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? <coughs> Motion passes. Item 11, approval of the surplus equipment online auction. That's a mouthful. I'll, I'll yeah. let you take it from there. <laughs> uh, board, we have a lot, and let me see, I'll say this sort of sarcastic, a lot of treasures stored away in our storage room that I'm sure somebody would like to buy from us. So we like to have an online auction, and we've started a list. There'll be more pages of it. But um, things from like tables or cabinets or chairs or Panasonic TV, a Magnavox TV, but they're all surplus items that we're never going to use. And truthfully, they don't have a lot of value, but they may be a treasure to somebody. So we like to put these online for people to bid on. And uh, there'll be a bid ticket online where that can be filled out and submitted. We'll have minimum bids on things. So most things will be a dollar, the minimum bid. So you can see how valuable they are. <laughs> and then if it doesn't get a bid, then we can legally dispose of it, since it was bought with tax dollars. 
but uh, we'll we'll put the list online and we'd like to have this auction from April 22nd to May 3rd so it'd be available for anyone that wanted to to bid on items and then on those days from 3 30 to 4 30 right after school for one hour anybody can come in and look at the treasures instead of just see the list online and so then they can know exactly what they're bidding for and item number and that. So we'd like to have your approval to run this auction from April 22nd to May 3rd on surplus items with the intent uh, that we will sell everything we can. It will not be a money maker, but we'll dispose of our getting our storage rooms uncluttered. And then anything it isn't bid on will either uh, properly dispose of or recycle or whatever, but then we have the right to dispose of it. Play, but yeah, we're just overwhelmed with obsolete stuff that we need to, right, Mr. Every room we open is just full of stuff yes, that will probably never be used. But if it can be a treasure to somebody, we'd certainly like them to have it. So I would recommend having the online auction will run from April 22nd through May 3rd, and people will be, it'll all be online. We'll publicize this and put it out to everybody. And then they can come in and look at these treasures if they want to bid. If they don't want to bid, fine. If they do want to bid, fine. But I have your permission to dispose of these surplus items. Okay, do we have a motion to that effect? I need to accept the surplus option. Thank you. And do we have a second? I'll second. Thank you. <clears throat> Any discussion or questions? Who's going to manage these people for this hour? We are going to work right. One of the guys said we're right back here in that corner. <laughs> Andy and I have talked about it with Charlie, and we're going to manage it through the uh, maintenance custodian department. But Andy and I are sort of heading this up. <clears throat> and uh, Mr. Chicky, our technology coordinator, is heading it up with all the technology. Because when we sell technology, we want to make sure the hard drives are wiped and all this, so none of our privacy information is out there. And, and you know, we have really somebody really needs a copy machine that doesn't work. <laughs> that would be a great buy, I think, for somebody if they're really handy and repair. So make, make a boat anchor out of it? Yeah, we can do that. If you want to write the right number down, we'll be glad to sell it to you. There's an example. Are there anything in there that the student classes could use and that tear apart? We will have our staff, and we have had our staff, but we will again. You know, any, they get first opportunity or any activities we have. If you can use this, we're not going to get rid of it, so if it has value. But, uh, three legged chairs with one leg that can't be repaired and stuff like that. I mean, that's probably, if you need a three legged chair, we'd probably sell you one. <laughs> but things like that. And they're not real valuable stuff. But there again, if somebody can use it, we'll keep it. Good question. Yes, and we'll be all housed in one big general area. And we're, going to tr we're trying to get it into one area. In fact, that might be a challenge. Andy and the staff are working on that now, and okay. technology is working on that, getting it to one area so it can be viewed by the public. Okay. So that'd be a recommendation that we establish the dates and we have an online auction for our valuable surplus. Well, we have a motion and a second. And any further discussion? Okay, we'll call for a vote. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? All right. April 22nd through May 3rd, Monday to Friday. Yep. Uh, item 12, construction report. Board, it's been quite a few months I've come to this. We're ready to close out our construction project yes. from last year. <laughs> uh, we got the thing from the architects and the contractors. All the warranties have been in. All of our manuals are here. Everything is done so we can release our retainage. And I recommend we release our retainage, which has already been earned. We've just been holding it until they turned everything in. Did all the punch lists. So it's $82,904.32 that we've been holding till they did all the final work. It's been certified done, so I would recommend your approval to release the final payment to close out the project, which is good news. Yeah. Almost a year it took. Yeah. Is there a motion to make this final payment? So moved. Okay, thank you. Do we have a second? A second. Thank you. Okay, any questions or discussion? Anything concerning this? Any concerns? Nice to see it come to a close. I do have one number to give the board. Out of this whole project, over $800,000 project, 
we came in $13,917.91 under budget. That's always a nice term to be able to say after a year's time. We're $13,000 and change under budget. Really good job, board. Everybody, Andy, all the staff, a lot of hard work went into that, but good project. Sorry, okay. but I just wanted to share that one number that we were that's, under budget. That's great. <laughs> that's always good. Yes. Okay, uh, all in favor of the motion, it signify with an aye. 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 Opposed? The motion carries. Okay, item 13, instructional report. What? Oh, yeah, I want a construction report I got. One more for you. And oh, I'm sorry. I moved on, thank you. Yeah, but I want to talk a little bit about drainage. And I, put, I gave the board a map so they could look a little closer, but the community can look at the screen back here. Let me get orientated here. But let me see if my laser pointer will work. Maybe, maybe not. Hmm. Might have a dead battery. Uh -huh. It's on. There it is. Right in this area, you see all these lines here. That's that's a hill coming into our playground right here. And this is where we're flooding. When we get heavy rains, this area floods. There's some asphalt back here. And this area, when it floods, then runs into our tunnels underneath the building and runs into classrooms along here. And we got a preschool classroom and several other classrooms where it runs in and floods. So we've been looking religiously, trying to figure out what's the best solution to this. Well, first of all, we cleaned out all of our manholes covers on this parking lot and this parking lot. And over here, there's like six of them over here, drainage areas. And that helped a little bit, but really those areas don't hook up to anything. They're dry wells. Now some, we met with the town and met with our survey people and our architects. There is somebody remembering that there used to be a drainage tile that ran under the school out to the manhole cover in our parking lot here. But no one can quite remember where that's at and it's not on any map. We did find something that's potentially there. So we have commissioned a company to run cameras down all these manholes that do have drains out of them and to see if they're blocked or collapsed. One of them was listed 1908 that went around this way. Well I would about imagine that clay tile from 1908 is probably not in too good a shape. Um, I think some of our farmers understand that clay tile doesn't last, last a long time but not forever. So we've studied this really long and hard and there are really three options board. One option is to bore under the school and drain it out into this parking lot. That's not the most cost effective option, but that is an option. And when you bore under the school, we gotta get under those tunnels under the school. The other option is to take it clear on around, down around this way, clear out off the map. There's a marsh out there that we can drain it to, but the town doesn't have the capacity for us to hook on the town drains. So that's a lot of drainage heading out that way. The third option, which appears to be the best option, is start here, and there's a big hill here as you come around the corner of the school, but come around this way and come right out here, and the town has a major drain right here in our parking lot that the town would let us hook onto. The big thing is we would have to either bore or dig a pretty deep trench right through here. Well, we've had contractors look at it and they think that's doable and probably the most cost effective option. And so we're getting prices on those things, but that would get rid of the surface water. Because right now these drains that are coming off our roof, they don't go anywhere. And when we get heavy rains, it blows those drains apart and then floods this whole playground and then that water sits there and seeps under our foundation of the school into our tunnels. And if you go back there, there is erosion, severe erosion around our foundation back in here. It's got to be dealt with. And we really don't want to deal with some other things with parking lots and all that till we figure out this drainage. Because then that makes 
you hate to have a new parking lot and have to tear it up to get drainage right. You gotta get the drainage right first. But the contractor thought we could either dig a big trench there, which we'd have to cover till we get the pipe in and all that. They don't want kids falling in. It has to be this summer when we're not in school because that might be 12, 14 feet deep to get through that hill. Or another option is to bore the pipe underneath it, under the hill. But as we talk to the contractors, more cost effective than putting it under the school and a lot more cost effective than doing all this. So we're getting evidence on this, but what we're doing is we're going to run a video in these lines here that the town says we can hook onto to make sure those lines aren't damaged or collapsed. And so that's the next report we're waiting on to make sure those lines are good before we hook up to them. If we get that, I foresee coming back and looking at this route right here to get rid of that water. And then we can hook up our roof drains on the back of the school back here to that and get that water out of there. But that is what the architects and the engineers are looking at now and our survey people. Um, Andy, I forget the day we met. It was a couple weeks ago. It was snowing and it was cold out. Mm -hmm. We spent pretty well an afternoon out there with the town with the contractors, with the architect, with the yes. engineer. Anything else that you remember on that story that we talked about? We talked about a lot of options. Well, they were puzzled why the original addition where the drains came in went into under the school because that's just a recipe for future problems of which we are now... It does bother me with it going now under the school, facing them not right now. the water. Um, they said that once the R and R uh, excavating, and they're running the camera system for us. And once they give us the report, we'll forward it to them, and then they can actually see where the pipes go and the conditions. And they said if if there's already pipes existing and they're good shape, and it's just one corner or elbow that's clogged, they might be able to do some temporary stuff to help us until we get a future plan that works. But the big thing is, we have to get the water out ASAP because it's causing or will be causing future damage with the foundation of the school. You know, it's a lot easier to fix a drain than it is to try to correct a, a This building. quarter of the school, they're worried about foundation if we don't correct it. And we don't have any damage yet, but we've got to resolve that water issue. Yeah. So and we so. have to have it scoped, and we'll have to blow through it first. They'll have to blow through it first to make sure it's unclogged and then scope with the camera through it to find out where it leads to in its condition. That is a necessity. We have no way out around it or we're at a standstill. So to not act and do at least that much would be... Lord, we do have funds in our 2019 budget to do this when we get a handle on it. But until all the experts sort of agree that this is the best solution and we can bring you a proposal, but I just wanted to mention tonight to show you the different options they're looking at and they spent a lot of time on this working with the town and trying to recreate lost drains and things that have happened in the past and the town isn't real sure of, we're not real sure of, the county's real not real sure of, but trying to find, but something's happened because this has gotten worse in the last few years back here. So some drain somewhere is not, is collapsed or not working. And how do we resolve that is the issue, so. But actually, the back of the school actually slopes towards the school. So all that water runs right up against the school and has to be resolved. And so that's the major focus of this summer on the exterior building, getting that drainage resolved. Any questions or comments? I just wanted to bring it to your attention tonight. I'm hoping by April we'll have a proposal for you as the best way to go, but if I was predicting, it'll be going around the corner of the school and hooking up to our parking lot on this side here. And they looked about how much, there's a fence line there, a property line, and the school, and there's like 12 feet right there. And they said, yes, so there's room for us to get through there. Well, that's good news, so mm -hmm. without upsetting the foundation of the school is going to go through there. But there's not a lot of room there between the property line and the school. If there is that tile there in the back, um, will they take it out? The clay tile? And they haven't given us a recommendation that if they can repair it, that'd be their first choice to get it working again if it's just collapsed at a certain place. Yeah. So 
hopefully to get a report of that whole drainage because yeah, if we could get it working both ways, it would be an ideal situation. Because th that's a lot of school and the drainage to go around and there's a big hill behind us there, but other than that, we're pretty well flat. It's pretty hard to move water from that, that point on. Can we help you take any action on it? No, I just wanted to bring it to your attention that we will be bringing a proposal of a resolution of this. Okay. And I apologize for going ahead. I skipped over that. Tried to get ahead on you. No, that's good. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Jennifer, kept, Jennifer kept me honest there. Okay, now item 13, instructional report. Yeah, board, on the instructional report, um, we have the iLearn testing schedule that I put in your packet. Um, iLearn is a total different type of test than iSTEP. iSTEP's going away. iLearn's coming to all the schools in Indiana. And iLearn... It's totally different. ISTEP had very limited timelines for kids to work on. You have 30 minutes to do this test, not 30 minutes and 10 seconds. But now, I learned is different. There's no time limit. So. And the kids can work longer. Some kids will finish sooner. And so, and you, you work with kids in small groups. You get them in different testing schedules. So we're working at setting up a testing schedule. And we're looking to start testing on Monday, April 29th in the junior high and in the elementary, this will be grades three to eight that we're testing on. And we're looking at the, it'll run to about May 7th, 8th or 9th to finish the English and the math. Then we have uh, science and social studies on May 14th, 15th. We will be putting all this on our website and sending it to parents, but several other things we're going to do during the testing times. Uh, we're going to offer a free breakfast to all our students in order to get them the best testing situation possible. Right now, our free and reduced kids get free breakfast, but we're going to offer it to all our kids because we just know the kids perform better on high stakes testing with something in their tummy, no matter what their socioeconomic status is. And so we're going to offer a free breakfast at that time, and uh, we've got that set up. And in order to make sure we get our junior high school in the best testing situation possible, we're going to do the math and language arts the first few hours of the day. Uh, actually, our high school will have two-hour delay on those days. So when the high school comes later on, they will not miss any of their classes. We'll run a seven-period day, like on a two-hour delay schedule. But we'll have two hours to focus just on our junior high kids for testing. And we can get use our some of our high school, some of our high school teachers teach also junior high and that, and we can't run the schedule while we're testing. So high school kids, they can either choose to come two hours later in those that day, or if they come at the regular time, that's fine. We will put them in a study hall and we will take care of them. But uh, it's amazing. High school kids tend to find a way to delay if they can delay coming to school for a couple hours. No. It'll only be for a few days. What about your elementary kids that aren't testing yet? They will, but they have self-contained classrooms. They'll be in their self-contained classrooms. So my two will be fighting. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I agree. And your, and your family is not going to make it real happy, is it? <laughs> one yes, one no. Yep. But by rotating the high school kids, you have to have all your teachers. Yeah. And we're pulling these teachers out to test junior high. And in a small school district, we're sharing teachers. Where if you have a separate junior high or a separate high school, you don't get it. So a lot of junior, senior high schools get caught in that position. So they have to delay the high school schedule. But in order not to skip any high school classes, <coughs> we'll run the two-hour delay schedule so they will have all classes. It'll just start after the testing of the junior high kids, those days. For about a week? A little bit. Yeah, it'll be, uh, it's actually going to be six days. Six days. Mm -hmm. But there'll be makeups at other times, but we won't run that for the makeup. So, but we'll put all this on the website. We'll send all this out to parents. Now that it starts till uh, end of April, so we got a month on this, but just want the board to be aware that we this high stakes testing, we will interrupt the schedule for a few days. Beth has been working hard on this. Mr. Meddy's working hard. It's, it's grades three to eight, and then we'll be doing it, and um, it, it will total different situation. A kid may take an hour and a half to do this test, and another kid may take 20 minutes. And so you that makes the scheduling that totally different than what I step was. And it's going to be the whole state of Indiana is going to operate this way. So 
We're trying to set up a schedule. Have you talked to other superintendents? Are they doing a two-hour delay for their high school? Quite a few of them are. And I've even seen, uh, I know of many junior, senior high schools have done this in the past, even for ice day. It's pretty common. Not common for Argus, but mm -hmm. it'll give us a better testing situation. Well, like, let's just use Mr. Arnold sitting here. He teaches an eighth grade class, but he also teaches high school. Well, to test that eighth grade class in math, yeah, he can't be in the high school schedule. He's got to be pulled out of it, so now I can't I can't hire enough subs and run the schedule. Mr. Medich can't so just make better order, and it'll give our junior, senior high school kids the very best chance they can to maximize their scores. And it won't disadvantage the high school because we're still going to have those classes after the two-hour testing. We will run that complete schedule, and they'll have every class. So this is sort of news. I saw an eighth grader there light up when they heard that information on free breakfast. Yeah. Or they could be helping out here in the library or somewhere, or, or they can choose to stay home wherever they want to. I'm just thinking, how many do we have riding buses that wouldn't? Well, you'll have a bus for the two-hour delay, right? We'll run a double shift for those few days. For those so right all two. drivers, all so if they want to come in on the regular time, they can. If they want to take the delay, we'll be prepared for them. Yep. We'll be whatever the needs of the parents are and the kids. In the past, I've heard a lot of this, and I, I can almost tell you what will happen, but we'll make it possible for everybody. Yeah. I, I didn't realize there was a yeah. double bus route. Well, since it's a two-hour delay. The we'll run a two-hour delay. Scale. Elementary and junior high would be dropped off at normal time, which would be 7.40 or 7.50, depending if they come in for breakfast, which it seems they're all coming in for breakfast, so it'd be 7.40. We're going to feed everybody. Yeah. The buses would come back out to the routes and go the route again and pick up any high school student that wasn't on the bus in the morning. So, so basically they try to pass Jen's house twice. And Mr. Medich, we haven't had a chance to talk to the teachers about this, it's at the details we're telling you first, but uh, Mr. Medich and I have been working on it, and that's been working on it. We'll take care of the details and make sure everyone's taken care of it. Just let you know that this testing is gonna look different than ISTEP, and this is the state of Indiana that is dictating this, so it will be different. And this will be all online, no pencil and paper. <laughs> so will your high school teachers also take two hour delay or will they No, be they're gonna be testing school? junior high kids. Even if they are yes. not so oh, yes. like proctors or yes, whatever. We're okay. gonna get these kids in small groups where they can we can keep them focused. And do they know that yet or this is no. <laughs> I've uncorked a lot of things. <laughs> I knew lots of questions be asked, but give us a chance to meet with staff and work out. We're a month away, mm -hmm. but I wanted to mention it here so you knew what we're. But we've been working on it pretty hard, and it's just a whole different way of thinking of things when you don't have time limits on a test. You can't run schedules. Yeah, good, all good thoughts, but we want to make sure our. Th Grade three through grade eight have the best opportunity to take that test and do their very best on it. Really important for our school grades. Right, so this I learn is going to correlate to the school grade, just like I Yes, said. it will definitely be our school grades, a big portion of it. And the truth is, our junior high kids, our middle school kids, they determine our high school school grade with this test. I'm not saying that's real accurate, but there's a lot of truth to that in the Mr. Medich. It's a big portion of it. The high schoolers determine things like graduation rate and those type of things, but this test definitely factors into that school grade. And so what are our sophomores going to take then? They start taking ISTEP? ISTEP. Last time for ISTEP. Then it goes on. <coughs> so ISTEP is fading into the sunset after how many years? Mm -hmm. It's going to be IOR. Okay. We don't need action on that thing so it shows a vote. Um, we label it that way. I really don't think you do. We will follow the state's testing schedule. I just want to let you know we're going to publicize it and okay. get it out to people. And there will always be kids with makeups and all that information. Okay, then item B says a video, I read three. Do you have the video? I think it's a three minute video that we're going to put on our website for parents because this is totally new for parents too. And we can put the video up here and we'll show it to you. I read three is an assessment given to third grade students in Indiana. If you have a third grade student, you may be wondering, why do students take I read three? 
Make. What does I read three measure? What happens if my student does not pass I read three? And what can I do to prepare my student for this test? I read three is a test that measures students' ability to read and their ability to understand what they have read. Research shows that the ability to read and understand text is important for student success. In kindergarten through second grade, students are primarily learning how to read. Beginning in fourth grade, students must be able to read to learn. Because reading to learn is such an important skill, the Indiana General Assembly passed a law requiring that all students in grade three take a test to measure their reading skills. The test, I read three, measures reading standards from grade one to grade three and checks to make sure students are ready to make the change to reading to learn. If students pass the I read three assessment, they show that they are ready to read to learn. If they do not pass the assessment, the school is required to give the student extra help and support in their reading skills. Each local school creates their own plan to provide this support. So talk to your student's teacher or principal to find out more about the support offered at your school or visit the IDOE website for requirements. Do you want to help your student prepare for IREAD 3? Best preparation is strong instruction based on Indiana academic standards. You can also take a sample test to help students get used to the types of questions on the assessment and the tools available in the online system. If you want to understand even more details about the content that's measured on the assessment and how the questions are written, you can look at the test blueprints and item specifications. The Office of Student Assessment is always happy to provide you with any support that you need. Contact us if you have any questions about IREAD 3 and we will work together to ensure that all Indiana students achieve the reading skills they need for future success. The State of Indiana has put that out for all parents, so we will link that on our website for our third graders. If a third grade does a third grader does not pass I read three, then we are required to provide remediation and tutoring services, in which we put them into a summer program, and during that you passed on summer school, and then they take the test again, and uh, usually we're about a hundred percent effective after the remediation, getting them through the test. If not, the state law requires that they are given additional help or they're retained. Well, retention's not usually our first mode of operation. That does not usually help the kid much. So we want the kid to be successful. So we will do everything we can to get the kid through the I read three exam. So that's a huge thing for our third graders. It really evaluates our pre-K program, core through grade three, on teaching a child basic reading skills. So that's a huge hurdle for our kids. And then after that comes the I learn. Based on top of that. So one you'd be aware of that test is coming too. So a lot of pressure on our kids with this high stakes testing. And, uh, we want to work with parents not to put undue pressure on them, but just encourage them to perform at their very best and give it their very best shot. So that will be coming and with I learn and I read completely new terms for the state of Indiana. That's will be the testing this spring. So Bonnie, that's sort of my instructional okay. report, unless there's questions. Uh, the I read three then precedes the I learn. Are there, or is that at the, at the same time? There's a gap there. I'm trying to think okay. the exact date. Well, it is but ahead of it though. Yeah, it's okay. a, yeah. There, okay. there's a gap, but they, yeah, they get hit pretty hard. Yeah. It takes them well, quite a bit of instruction time away from us. But it is high stakes and does evaluate our schools. Okay. Okay, item 14, approval of donations. We have two donations to approve, one from Craig Welling. Is that, should that be Welding or is that right, Welling? Uh, it's, a, it's a gentleman, his name is Craig Welling. Okay, that Welling. is correct, okay. And also waste management. 
So Craig Walling and Waste Management. Just recommend you accept those donations, which we appreciate very much. Mm -hmm. Is there a motion to accept the donations? I have a motion. Thank you. And a second? I'll say. Thank you. Okay, we have a motion and a second to accept donations. Usually we don't have too much discussion on that. <laughs> That's a good thing. Okay. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? All right. Uh, item 15, approval of claims. Can you get some Somebody. bills to pay. Patty, do you have a total yeah. there for us? Uh, claims in the total of $581,696.55. We would certainly recommend you pay the bills. I move claims are approved as presented. Thank you, Jenny. And is there a second? I'll second. Thank you. Okay, motion and a second to approve claims, payment of claims. Any questions, discussion? Okay, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, item passes. Uh, financial reports. Uh, I see Patty's got slides for us. Yeah, Sorry. just a couple slides board as we've gone to our new funds. Uh, general fund, capital projects, transportation funds are in the past in Indiana. We now have an educational fund and an operations fund. Mm -hmm. And so, but this is our revenue report. Uh, this is revenue from the state of Indiana. We have other revenue, but I'm just showing the general fund revenue report, which the state did not change revenue. They just changed how we spent money, spend money. They only changed one side of it. So the money comes in in the same form. It's always got. Mm -hmm. And so that slide, let's go to the educational fund slide. Uh, we're two months in, this is through February of our 2019 budget, and our educational fund, um, we're, we're running really, the last three years, been real happy where our general fund, our educational fund, and this space for our teachers and our education portion. Um, it looks real good as we're starting 2019 on this slide, so very pleased where we're at with that slide. Then the other slides are operational fund, and you can see... Um, it looks like we're overspending an operational fund. And I want to let the board know that we're really not. This is because we pay a lot of bills once a year, and we pay them in January. Instead of spreading them out for 12 months, uh, like an example, we paid all our insurance the first month of the year. And uh, we pay uh, other costs, like our cost to be in our liability insurance was one, health insurance another, we pay to be in the MACE organization, our health insurance. That bill is a once a year bill. So those bills have been paid, so you will see that evening out uh, as we look at that, and um, really in the last three years I've been pretty pleased with this. The next few months you'll see that. So feeling good about the 2019 budget, I think it's online, and um, do not see it as overspending at this time. So. Any questions on financial report? We're early in the year. Two months is not a lot of it. <coughs> okay. Um, we're moving into superintendent comments. Just one comment board after our meeting. We do have an executive session on personnel. Mm -hmm. but that's my only further comment. Okay. We'll move into board comments. You like to start? Okay. We're moving down the line now. Again, congratulate Mr. Art, Mr. Redditch, and our students. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, I know it was mentioned earlier, but uh, <coughs> kudos to our drama and theater department. Wonderful, wonderful program. Nothing but the best about it. Yeah. It well was. done. I'd just like to say congratulations to the boys' basketball team for the first yes. win. Yes. Mm -hmm. It was exciting, years. wasn't it? Mm -hmm. Over the regional, right? Yeah. And a w regional win, so we met up with a buzzsaw. <laughs> <laughs> They're still in the tournament and may win the whole thing. Yeah. Very good shot at it. Okay, anything further? If not, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. Um, two or three five. Okay, I've got Chris and Jim. Okay, thank you. Okay, we have a motion to adjourn and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? 
and we are adjourned at 7.55, right? That'll work. <laughs>